Red lobsters across America are shutting down. And Thailand might have something to do with it. You know, as long as I can get them Cheddar Bay biscuits at home, I'm not too pressed. But what, what's happening in all the images of my childhood? We got to talk about it, Andrew. The headlines are going crazy right now because this is a major American chain, right? Red Lobster could file for bankruptcy this month following the closure of 50 plus stores. So anyway, guys, we are going to get into the reasons why. Break it down. Make sure you like, subscribe, turn on your notifications. Andrew, you know what could go good on some Red Lobster is Smala Sauce. Oh. Oh, check out Smala Sauce at SmalaSauce.com. But David, I would say Red Lobster, it's a symbol of America, man. That was like America's seafood restaurant that you dined in. You got the Cheddar Bay biscuits. And, I mean, people loved it. Hold on, Andrew. When you say this was an image or a stalwart of American retail, what era do you mean? Are you talking about specifically the era that everybody's nostalgic for right now? The 90s and 2000s. Right. The 80s, 90s, 2000s. Um, A lot of these things, Andrew, even all the way back, Sears is gone now, right? Right, right. And I will say this, by the way, guys, not all Red Lobsters are going away. They shut down uh, about 93 stores nationwide, but they still have like 400 out there. So it's just like- Are they popping though? Are they- (laughs) A big chunk of Red Lobsters are shutting down. And uh, they're filing for bankruptcy, which means they got to restructure things, close down a bunch of stores, auction the stores off, right? right? And and it's sort of like, it just has to do with the fourth turning of America right now. A lot of brands, Andrew, from the third turning that were these iconic images from the 90s, they are going away right now. Yeah, maybe they can't hang right now. We're going to get into the reasons, guys. There's eight reasons. Some of these reasons you may have been already thinking about yourself And some of these, I guarantee you, you have not thought about. Right, right, right. Um, Number one, Andrew, people just don't think it's cool anymore. There's something in the marketing world called brand erosion, basically outdated image, poor customer service, failure to innovate. Now, believe me, the failure to innovate, it may be driven by something called PE, but we're going to get into that later. Do you think it's just true, Andrew? Oh, David. That it's just not cool to go to Red Lobster? What, What Instagrammers are going to Red Lobsters? When do foodies talk about Red Lobster? What millennials and Gen Z are trying to go to Red Lobster with all the new restaurants out there and i'm gonna go deeper into this because you know we think about food a lot so i know what the other competitors to red lobster are david plus cheddar biscuits they're just not i mean with all the pastries out there cheddar biscuits where do they rank well you know you can get the home mix now for the cheddar bay biscuits i'll say this um most of the people i would view going to a red lobster are boomers or gen x yeah and also think about it david what seafood spots blew up in the past 10 years? The Asian Cajun ones. Are you talking about like, the Viet Louisiana yeah, style? Yeah, like the boiling crabs, the Viet Louisiana style, the ones from Texas, the ones with butter, Cajun, the whole shebang. Those got really popular, and I feel like a lot of people are eating their seafood there instead. Reason number two, there are high operational costs. Whether you're talking about rent, utilities, labor, labor insurance, uh, the whole this is affecting everybody yeah. in retail right now, whether you're an F&B or you're in like, you know, selling goods. And you think that a company as big as Red Lobster, you think that they're like, I don't know, in charge or own their own land. But for some reason, their rent can still go up. They don't necessarily own all that, right? Because sometimes they're not in a standalone. They're connected to some other building. Well, in the case of Red Lobster, Andrew, their standalone restaurants, they actually sold the land. Yeah, and honestly, like... Dude, who who's like, if you say you go to Red Lobster, that's almost like, it's like a joke now. Uh, number three, C19. Obviously, C19 had a big yeah. impact on just uh, people's consumption habits, how much they're going out, how much they're cooking at home. Duh. Oh, oh, let me tell you, talk about this, David. People are more choosy on where they spend a bunch of money out when they go out at night. So they want like a better experience and Red Lobster's not giving them the vibes. But well, also- arguably, I would say that it's not only not improved since like 1997, maybe the experience has regressed. Yeah. And also, who's ordering Red Lobster to go? Like if you're talking about DoorDash, Uber Eats, who's really ordering your lobster tail to go? By the time they get to your door, why would you want to eat the lobster tail and the cheddar biscuits? They're going to be dry. Let me defend the double chocolate cake at Red Lobster, though. The double thick chocolate. You can't defend it enough to bring Red Lobsters back. Point number four, Andrew, they gambled with the all-you-can-eat shrimp promotion, and they said it led to $11 million loss in a year. However, Andrew, there is some more to that because who did they buy the shrimp from? Possibly also from the company that they were sold to. Yeah, well, so the Thai Union Group 
is from Thailand. They are their biggest supplier of shrimp to Red Lobster, but they also own, I believe, a majority or a large stake of Red Lobster, and they are being partially blamed. I'm not saying I know the reasons why, but we're going to get so into it. So you're saying there's some funny money going on? But, but basically, the all-you-can-eat shrimp did not do what the company thought they were going to do because basically locations would run out of shrimp for weeks or even months they would run out of shrimp because of the all-you-can-eat shrimp deal. Right. So they lost $11 million. So we easily. thought it was going to be a good deal, but then people also thought it was too good of a deal. Yeah. Point number five, financial struggles. Obviously, declining profitability, de declining mm -hmm. sales, sh costs that are shooting up. That's yeah. Everybody's going through it right yeah. now. Okay. But when you're like a legacy location and a lot of your costs and all these unions and stuff, they're locked in. You're not a, you can't really bust an audible. You're not very like flexible. Yeah. Point number six, competitive pressure. One thing that I want to point out, David, that I think is an overlooked reason is the air fryer at home because the air fryer is meant to fry things. And what does Red Lobster have a lot of? They kind of have a lot of fried foods. Yes, they have lobster tails and stuff like that, but also all the other foods you can buy at home and essentially make them. Like, you know how many recipes there are to make your own Cheddar Bay biscuits? Number two, you can buy the Cheddar Bay Red Lobster brand biscuits and make them at home. Pop them in the air fryer. They probably taste the same. You can make all the fries at home. You can make the fried shrimp. You can buy like the battered shrimp and then just air fry it at home and it tastes pretty good. I would say it's going to taste nine out of 10. I mean- what, Red Lobster's just deep frying the stuff anyways? Right. Um, number seven, strategic restructuring. Obviously, this is getting into the private equity aspect, Andrew, where private equity firms, they come into a company, they sell off all the profitable assets already, and then they basically like milk it dry, yeah. right? But before you say that all American chains are doing bad, David, I do want to point out that Olive Garden is killing it. Olive Garden just passed the five billion dollar mark for revenue. So what? What is your? Uh, you know, like obviously we're enough. not McKinsey consultants, Andrew. Why is Olive Garden able to do this? Like all you can eat stuff and be profitable, whereas Red Lobster is just well, and Olive uh, Garden. Boo, 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 boo. Well, let's be honest. If you offer all you can eat breadsticks versus all you can eat shrimp, one thing costs a lot less, which is the breadsticks. So Olive Garden, also I think Italian style food. Uh, is just more appealing across the board. I think that, like I said, there's way more competition in the seafood market between your raw bars, between all your new uh, sushi spots, between your Asian fusion Cajun there's, spots. There's like hood spots that do it. I've never seen it like a hood pasta spot. Exactly. Like Olive Garden, man, I'm not going to lie. I'm not saying that food is amazing, but like I would eat there still. And it's re I think it's relatively cheaper than well, Red Lobster. Well, actually, if you look at the world rankings globally, Italian food is number one. I yeah. don't know where, like, raw seafood bar ranks. You yeah. know what I mean? Also, there just wasn't enough flavor at Red Lobster, man. I'm telling you, the Asian boiling crabs, they no. took over the game. Anytime people go, yeah, I love going to Red Lobster. Their chocolate cakes and Cheddar Bay biscuits are the best. But they don't mention anything about the actual core product. That's an issue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, of course, last but not least, Andrew, people blaming private equity firms. What? So, basically, here's my thing. What does this mean, David? What what is can you basically like, there was this uh, I believe Darden Capital is a private equity firm that owned Red Lobster. All right, so they, they are the original owners. They sell it to a private equity firm. The private equity firm milks it, doesn't change anything. Then they sell it to the Thai group. The Thai group sees a lot of uh Thai union, they see a lot of synergies because they own a lot of seafood. So they're like, Yeah, we can make this work, but then it doesn't work as good as they can. So now they just gotta close a lot of them down. Right. But I do wanna know, guys, to say all in all, like I wanna I'm not here to bash Red Lobster. I have nothing personally against Red Lobster, okay? But I do wanna say this that I think in general, when you expand very quickly, it looks like you're super hot, but then when you have to close a bunch, then it looks worse. It's almost like, you know, like let's say you were in the lead by 30 points, right? So that's a lot. You're in the lead by 30 points. You're killing it. You're killing your opponent by 30 points. In the, and, then, and then by the fourth quarter, it cuts down to like 12 points. You're still in the lead, but you lost a lot. So I'm saying that Red Lobster just expanded way too fast and now they have to close a bunch. But to be honest, they still have like 400 locations nationwide. So it's not like they're not all gone. Right. I think ultimately the fact that Red Lobster became not cool or not a good deal or their products became like considered subpar, that led them to a point where the private equity companies could come in and gut them. You know what I mean? Like everybody wants to blame it on either 
old American legacy retail companies becoming outdated and just like way too old school internally, or they want to blame it on private equity firms for being incredibly greedy. Mm. But you need a combination of two things because if a business is booming, why would a private equity come in company come in and gut it and then destroy it? Mm. Do you see what I'm saying? Where I'm like, yeah, everything is true. The people who hate private equity and think it's like a scourge on American communities, you know, cause ultimately there is some downstream impacts on like, you know, low wage workers and things like that. Like, that's a real aspect, but these companies being whack uh, and consumer taste changing and not uh, them not being trendy enough, that's a real thing too. No, I they're mean- They're both true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, before all the uh, the private equity talk, you know, a lot of like customer bases for Red Lobster was going down. So that's a fact. You know what I mean? Like just less people were going. It was less trendy. It wasn't worth the money. You could get your money elsewhere. You know, I think steakhouses got hit too because of maybe Korean barbecue like type stuff, you know, and there's just like different steakhouses. Oh, you mean now. all you can eat stuff? Yeah, like your old school steakhouses just aren't the same anymore. So just everything is on its way. Like if, you, if your company had a 20, 25 year run, you got to start thinking about how to innovate is what I'm saying. Right. But I think, in my opinion, these large American F&B brands that used to be in like every, you know, this is like before like hipster food and eater and all this thrillist stuff got popular and Yelp and stuff. I think they're washed. Like all the Times Square, oh. all the Times Square style restaurants. And oh, man, you watch but, all Red Lobster. All right, so, so do you have a comment on this though? This is why I think it's going so viral. It's because the older generation, Gen X and boomers, they're like, man, all the stuff that I loved and all the stuff I spent my birthdays at or celebratory dinners is going away. The America I know from the 80s and 90s is vanishing. Well, are you surprised that Cracker Barrel's not doing very well either? Huh? Is it the PE firms on that one? Is it the private equity that's ruining Cracker Barrel too? Or is it just that Cracker Barrel might just not be that good in today's world? Yeah, guys, let us know what you think in the comments section below. Why is Olive Garden succeeding? Why is Red Lobster going down the drain? Let us know what you think in the comments section below. Until next time, we the Hot Pot Boys. We out. Peace. Peace.